section 92 and 93 left for new stuff for the entire semester. The nice thing about section 92 is there isn't a lot new in the section. Sections 91 and 92 could have been combined together into one longish section. There's a lot of overlap between 91 and 92. There's just a little bit new in 92. So in 91 we introduced the concept or, or the idea of sequences. And in section 9.2, we're going to focus on arithmetic sequences. And an arithmetic sequence is one you, where you have to add or subtract by the same number to get from term to term. So every sequence that we deal with in this section is considered an arithmetic sequence. And that means you either have to add or subtract the same number. to get from one term to the next in the, se in the sequence. And that number that you have to add and subtract to get from one term to the next is considered the common difference. Um, so each of the problems between 1 and 8, they're supposed to be arithmetic sequences. I can show you that they're arithmetic sequences by kind of writing the first four terms and showing you that each term is the same you know, number of apart. So let me just do problem two. Problem two wants me to list out the first four terms. Wants me to find a sub one, which is the first term, a sub two, which is the second term, a sub three, which is the third term, and a sub four, which is the fourth term. That's easy enough to do. To find a sub one, I plug one in for the n. And this gives me two minus one, which is one. So the first term is one. The second term is going to be 2 times 2 minus 1, if I just plug a 2 in for that n there, which is going to be 4 minus 1, which is 3. The third term is going to be 2 times 3 minus 1, which is 6 minus 1, which is 5. And the fourth term, 2 times 4 minus 1, which is 8 minus 1, which is 7. So in, in my answer, I'm supposed to write the first four terms. And the first four terms are 1, 3, 5, and 7. You can't really show show that it's an arithmetic sequence, but I can tell you what the common difference is. Because each number is 2 higher than the previous one, I say the common difference is 2. And sometimes, instead of writing the word common difference, I say that d equals 2 and d for an arithmetic sequence means how far the numbers are apart. In this case, for, to get from one term to an x, they're two apart. It's always this number right there, the number that goes in front of the n. That's the common difference in an arithmetic sequence. That's everything I wanted to show for number two. I didn't really show that it was an arith uh, as an arithmetic sequence, other than I list the terms and they were all or two apart, and I told you the common difference is two. I'm not really showing it. But I'm finding the common difference and writing out the first four terms. It'd probably be better if I, my instructions just said, find the common difference and write out the first four terms. But I didn't write that, so that's what I intend to, for you to do. So I'll do the same thing for problem four. I'm going to list out the first four terms. First term, a sub 1 is going to be 6 times 1 plus 3. That's 6 plus 3, which is 9. A sub 2, the second term, is going to be found by going 6 times 2 plus 3. 6 times 2 is 12, plus 3 is 15. A sub 3 is going to be 6 times 3 plus 3, which is 18 plus 3, which is 21. And A sub 4 is going to be 6 times 4 plus 3, which is going to be 24 plus 3, which is 27. Lastly, so that's so this is part of what needs to be done. I'll need to list out the first four terms. And in this sequence, the first four terms are 9, 15, 21, and 27. I'm supposed to write the common difference. And the common difference is what you have to add to get from one term to the next. Because 9 plus 6 is 15, 15 plus 6 is 21, 21 plus 6 is 27. The common difference is D. And again, in an arithmetic sequence, the number to the left of the n is going to be the common difference. So in this particular 
and since the common difference is 6. And that's all I need for problem 4 in this section. So this is, it really isn't any different than in the last section, 9-1, other than I'm saying one extra thing, that the difference between each ter successive term is 6. And that's going to be the case for a lot of the problems. They're not going to be that, that different. So problem 6, same instructions. I'm going to go a sub 1 as 2 minus 3 times 1. That's going to be 2 minus 3, and 2 minus 3 is negative 1. a sub 2 is going to be 2 minus 3 times 2, which is going to be 2 minus 6, and 2 minus 6 is negative 4. a sub 3 is going to be 2 minus 3 times negative 3, which is going to be 2, it's going to be 2 minus 3 times positive 3, which is going to be 2 minus 9, which is going to be negative 7. And a sub 4 is going to be 2 minus 3 times 4, which is going to be 2 minus 12, which is going to be negative 10. To get from negative 1 to negative 4, or from negative 4 to negative 7, or from negative 7 to negative 10, the distance are the, the, the these are negative 3 apart, because I'm going backwards, so instead of instead of like in the last problems where I went like if I would have went from one to four to seven to ten, I'd say the difference is three because the numbers are getting bigger. These numbers are three apart because but because I'm getting smaller, I'm going to say the common difference is negative three, and that kind of goes in hand with what I've been doing. I've been picking off the number in front of the end and calling it the common difference. I'm going to take the sign with it. So for this particular problem. The first four terms are negative 1, negative 4, negative 7, and negative 10. Because the numbers are getting smaller, the common difference, d, we attach a negative sign to, and I'll say it's negative 3. For some reason, I didn't leave myself room to do problem 8, so I'll put problem 8 on its own piece of paper. 8 is a sub n equals 9 minus 2n. So I'm going to do the first four terms. a sub 1 is 9 minus 2 times 1, which is 9 minus 2, which is 7. a sub 2 is 9 minus 2 times 2, which is 9 minus 4, which is 5. a sub 3, the third term, is 9 minus 2 times 3, which is 9 minus 6, which is 3. And a sub 4, the fourth term, is 9 minus 2 times 4, which is 9 minus 8, which is 1. So the first four terms are 7, 5, 3, and 1. And the common difference is 2. To get from 7 to 5, they're 2 apart. 5 to 3 is 2 apart. 3 and 1 is 2 apart. Again, because the numbers are getting smaller, I'm going to say the common difference is a negative. I'm going to take the number in front of the n with its sign. So I'm using d to represent common difference rather than writing the word common difference. So that's how you would do it, the first four even problems. So the first four odd problems should work exactly the same way. There isn't anything tricky in these. The only difference between this section and the last section is I wanted to focus on the common difference in addition to writing out terms in the sequence. The next problems are asking me to find a formula, which we also did in the last section. So this, again, isn't any different, but it's worded a little bit different, so it might feel different. Like if I just told you to do problem 10 by yourself, you might not be able to read the instructions and know how to do it. But nevertheless, it, it, the, the way that I solve it, it's going to be identical to something I did in the last section, 9.1. And after I do one or two of them, you might see the connection or, and remember that, oh yeah, we did this. This is just a question worded slightly different, but the algebra is the same. That happens a lot the higher you go. In calculus, you do something called um, finding derivatives, and you find derivatives again and again and again and again. And the, um, what you do with a derivative is you don't do many things with a derivative, 
but you'll call what you're doing something different even though the algebra is the same and that's kind of the case for this problem the algebra is going to be the same as something i did in 9.1 even though the words are a little bit different so i'm asked to find a formula for the nth term so i'm asked to find a formula that says a sub n equals and in order to find an a sub n equals formula in an arithmetic in an arithmetic sequence i need a number to the left of the n a number to the left of the n is how far each term is apart and in this sequence the common difference is four so the number to the left of my n is going to be four and i want the first term to be three if i just wrote this as my sequence and if i plugged in one for n i'd get a sub one is four times one a sub, it's not going to work because that's going to be four so i'm going to do what we did in the last section i'm going to go a sub n equals 4n plus x, and I'm going to solve for x with the information that's given. The information that I haven't used that's given is the first term is 3. So I'm going to go a sub 1, in general, would be 4 times 1 plus x for this sequence. But I know that a sub 1 is 3 in this sequence, so 3 is going to equal 4 plus x. If I minus 4 from both sides, I get negative 1 equal to x. The for, this formula, a sub n equals 4n, instead of writing plus negative 1, I'm going to write minus 1, will generate a sequence that each term's 4 part and the first term is 3. This is extra. This is just kind of to kind of check your work. If you want to, you can do a sub 1. This is not necessary, but just to show you that I'm right. If I do a sub 1, I get 4 times 1 minus 1 which is 4 minus 1, which is 3. I needed a1 to be 3. In order for my answer to be correct, a2 has to be 7 because the common difference has to be 4. And it's a positive, so numbers are getting bigger. And this formula, a sub 2, is going to be 4 times 2 minus 1, which is 8 minus 1, which is 7. And this works perfectly. The first term is 3. Successive terms have a difference of 4. That's what I need for my sequence to do. And that's what this sequence defined as a sub n equals 4n minus 1 does perfectly. So for each of the problems between 9 and 18, I'm going to start off with this seed formula. a sub n equals a number times n plus x. The number that goes to the left of the n is the common difference. My second line is going to say a sub 1 equals, and I'll put um, the number times 1 plus x. And then I'm going to replace the a sub 1 with the given number. I'm going to solve for x and write my answer. So every single problem between 9 and 18, I'll do the same way, whether the D is positive or negative, or whether the A1 is positive or negative. So when I do problem 12, it's an arithmetic sequence. All arithmetic sequence, the common difference goes in front of the N. So in this particular problem, my formula is going to be A sub N equals 2N plus some number. I can do it in my head, but I won't force that upon you. Now I need to find out what number I have to add to the 2n to make the first term come out to be 5. If you're clever and you got 3 for an answer without algebra, then that's perfect. You can just write the answer down. A lot of people can, but um, I don't like to just do things in my head, so I'll show you the algebra way to do it. Now I'm going to change the n's to 1. I'm going to go a sub 1 equals 2 times 1 plus x. I'm going to replace the a sub 1 with 5. I get 5 equals 2 times 1, which is 2 plus x. I minus 2 from both sides. And I get 3 equal to x. Now I'll take the 3 and plug it back into that formula and claim that this equation, a sub n equals 2n plus 3. If I started listing terms, the first term would be 5, and every successive term would be 2 apart. So the terms would be 5, 7, 9, 11, 13, and 15. And I'm not going to check it. I, I know that that's right, but you could. Plug in 1 for n to make sure you get 5 for the first. Plug in 2 for n, make sure you get 7 because the terms need to be 2 apart. Plug in 3 for n, make sure you get 9 and so forth. You can go as far as you care to go. In 14, the common difference is negative, so the numbers would be getting smaller. I'm going to start off the same way. Need a formula. The common difference needs to be multiplied by the n. And I need to know what number to put after the negative 4n to get the first term to be 3. I do that by 
first replacing the n with 1 on both sides of the equation. Then I'm going to replace the a1 with what it's equal to, which is 3. Multiply the negative 4 and 1 on the right side and solve for x. I get 7 equal to x. So my answer in this particular case is a sub n equals negative 4n plus 7. That's going to produce, if I listed out the first four terms of the sequence, the first term would be 3. Each successive term would be 4 apart and they'd be getting smaller. It'd go 3, negative 1, negative 5, negative 9, negative 13, and so forth. I don't have to list out any of the terms of the sequence because I'm not asked to. I'm just asked to find an equation that fits the description, and that's what I did here. 15, 16 is essentially the same problem. I'm going to find a formula. The formula is going to be in the form a sub n equals the common difference, which is negative 2, times n plus some number. Plug 1 in for the n's, and I get a sub 1 equals negative 2 times 1 plus x. On the left side, replace a sub 1 with what it equals, which is 5. On the right side, multiply the negative 2 and the 1. So I get 5 equals negative 2 plus x. Add 2 to both sides, and I get 7 equal to x. Plug that 7 back into the formula, and I'll get my answer. The sequence or the formula, a sub n equals negative 2n plus 7, will create a sequence that the first term is 5, and each term goes down by 2. So it'll go 5, 3, 1, negative 1, negative 3, negative 5, negative 7, and so forth. So if you started plugging numbers in for n, not that you have to, but if you plugged 1 in for n, you'd go a sub 1 is negative 2 times 1 plus 7, which is negative 2 plus 7, which is 5, which is supposed to. If you did a sub 2, you'd go a sub 2 is negative 2 times 2 plus 7, which is negative 4 plus 7, which is 3. And that's good because successive terms are two apart, because I'm told they're two apart, and better yet, I'm told they're getting smaller, and that's perfect. a sub 3, if I did it, would come out to be 1. So that's the sequence I was trying to construct a formula for, and it works perfectly. The next problems are just small extensions from these. For the next problems, I'm going to find a formula for a sub n, and then I'm going to use the formula to find a specific term. But they're not going to feel real different to the next problems. So problems 17 through 24, I'm given an arithmetic sequence. And if, if I was in like sixth grade and I wanted to do this question, to find the 30th term of the sequence, I could do this. This is first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth, eleventh, twelfth, 13th, 14th, 15th, 16th, 18th, 17th, I'm getting tired of this, 18th, 19th, 20th, 21st, 22nd, 23rd, 24th, 25th, 26th, 27th, 28th, 29th, 30th. I think the answer to the question, what is the 30th term of this sequence, 2, 4, 6, 8, blah, 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 I think it's 62. So I could get the answer for every single problem between 17 and 24 by listing out the sequence as far as I need to. To find the 30th term of the sequence, it's not rocket science to write down the first 30 terms, although it was a nuisance. And if I asked you to find the 300th term, this would get to even be more of a nuisance. Writing down 30 terms, I mean, it, wasn't, it wasn't horrible to do, it wasn't pleasant to do, but this was the answer to this problem should be 32, assuming I hadn't made a mistake here. Was it good? And I don't see a mistake, so I think that's the answer. The way that this section would want me to do this is a two-step process. First, I'm going to create 
a formula, this is the algebra way for it, for a sub n. This is an arithmetic sequence with a common difference of 2. So I know the formula a sub n equals 2 times n plus x is going to work perfectly if I can get a value for x. And I know that a sub 1, the first term in the sequence, equals 2 times 1 plus x. First term in the sequence is 2, so I get 2 equals 2 plus x. I subtract 2 from both sides, and now I think I have a mistake. I think this... I don't see a mistake. I'm perplexed right here. Let me subtract 2 from both sides. And I get x equals 0. So my formula is going to be a sub n equals 2n, which means a sub 1 is 2 times 1, which is 2. a sub 2 is 2 times 2, which is 4. And a sub 30, which I'm trying to find, the 30th term, is just supposed to be 2 times 30. The 30th term in my list is supposed to be 60. Let me see. This is first, second, third, fourth, fifth. Fine, because a sub 5 is supposed to be 10. a sub 6, 7, 8, 9, Oh, I see my mistake, and I made the mistake very early. Um, if you were watching me, you might have caught me making a mistake, but I didn't catch myself. I was supposed to go 12, 14, and Lowell, I missed 14, I missed 16. I'm supposed to go 16, 18, 20 when I was making my list, and then I didn't make a mistake afterwards. Then 22, 24, 26, 28. 30. This is supposed to be 60. So I wasn't gifted enough to be able to list down 30 terms without making a mistake. Had I listed all 30 terms without making a mistake, I would have told you the 30th term was 60. But because I forgot the number 16, this tedious process that's supposed to be easier than doing the algebra made me make a mistake because just forgot a number. I went from 14 to 18, which is a bad thing to do. So these approaches, making the thir listing 30 terms and using the formula to find the 30th term, they're not supposed to conflict each other. They're supposed to match up with each other. And I'm less likely, apparently, to make a mistake via the algebra. One way or the other, the answer to problem 18, the 30th term is supposed to be 60 or a sub 30, which is a way to write the 30th term is supposed to be 60, whether you make a list of 30 terms without making a mistake, or you use the formula, first create a formula, and then use the formula to find the, the term. Um, I'm going to stick to the algebra, because apparently this doesn't work so well for me, although it should work quite fine. Just it's easy to make a silly mistake, although you should be able to increment by 2 pretty easily. So 20, it would be insane for me to try to write 75 terms. I, if I couldn't write 30 terms, separate it by 2. To write 75 terms, separate it by 4, it's not going to happen. So I'm going to create a formula for a sub n so I can find a sub 75. I'm going to say a sub n. The common difference here is 4, so it's going to be 4n plus x. The reason it's 4 because from 9 to 13, 13 to 17, and 17 to 21, they're the 4 part. I plug in 1 for n and get a sub 1 is 4 times 1 plus x. The first term in the sequence is what a sub 1 is, so I get 9 equals 4 plus x. I minus 4 from both sides and get 5 equal to x. So for this particular problem, the formula that works for this sequence is 4n plus 5. Now I can find the 75th term of the sequence without having to list all 75 terms because the 75th term of the sequence is a sub 75, which I can get by taking 4 times 75 plus 5 
time for our calculator. 4 times 75 plus 5. My calculator says I can't type that in. 4 parentheses 75 plus 5, and I get 305. So the 75th term in this sequence, which is a sub 75, is 305. So 18, 20, 22, 24, the next few problems, I can all solve the same way. I'm asked to find a specific term in an arithmetic sequence. I could find the formula for the sequence and then use the formula to find the, the term that I want. So it's similarly, to find 40, the 40th term, it wouldn't be impossible for me to write all 40 terms out, but I'd probably make an error apparently. So I'm going to use the formula approach, a sub n equals to the common difference to get from each term you have to subtract 3. Since they're getting smaller, I'm going to keep that negative sign next to the n. So I'm going to use a sub n equals negative 3n plus x. Plug in 1 for my n's, a sub 1 equals negative 3 times 1 plus x. a sub 1 I can replace with 11, so I get 11 equals negative 3 plus x. I add 3 to each side and get 14 equal to x. So the formula that works for this sequence is a sub n equals negative 3n plus 14, just taking this x and plugging 14. Now I can find the 40th term by going a sub 40 equals negative 3 times 40 plus 14. Simplify this and I'll get my answer. I think it's negative 106, but I'm going to go negative 3 times 40 plus 14. My calculator tells me it's negative 106. So if I listed 40 terms in the sequence, the 40th term, so if I went to the next one would be minus 3 is negative 1, and then negative 4, and then negative 7, then negative 10. I'd have to go a long ways to get to negative 106. But if I listed 40 terms, the 40th term should be negative 106. Probably the last one of these, yes. 26 and 28, the word problems really are these again, but just hidden. So finding the 200th term in that sequence, I could keep listing. Go, you know, 80, 75, 70, 65, and eventually I can list 200 terms, and whatever that term happens to be would be correct if I don't make an error. Easier for me to use a formula. I'm going to go a sub n equals 2, and each term is 5 apart. They're getting smaller, so I'm going to put a negative with the 5. So I'm going to go negative 5n plus x. Plug in 1 for my n's. a sub 1 equals negative 5 times 1 plus x. Solve this by replacing the a sub 1 with 100, because that's the first term, equals negative 5 plus x. Add 5 to both sides, and you get 105 equal to x. So the formula that generates the sequence is a sub n is negative 5n plus 105. Now I'm going to find the 200th term. I'll go a sub 200 equals negative 5 times 200 plus 105. Same deal, negative 5 times 200 plus 105. I get negative 895. So it, with a lot of effort, I could have, without the formula, figured out that the 200th term was negative 895. But there's no need to list all 200 terms because the formula will get you there way quicker. The word problems that are coming up are also, um, they're just like these problems, but in with words. So if I look at problem 26, it talks about a staircase that has 15 steps that is required, are made with bricks. So the bottom step has, so the first step, which I'll call the bottom step, took 50 bricks to make. The second step took 48. The third is going to take 46. That's basically what the problem says. The question is how many bricks are needed to, re to make the 15th step? I could continue with this. I probably wouldn't be that hard. Let me see if I could actually do this. So the fourth is going to be 44. The fifth step is going to need 42 bricks. The 6th, 40. The 7th, 
38, the 8th, hopefully I'm not making a mistake, 36, the 9th, I'll take 34 because each step takes two less, the 10th, 32, the 11th, 30, the 12th, 28, the 13th, 26, the 14th, 24, and the 15th, 22. I believe the question, the answer to the question, how many bricks are needed to construct the 15th step? I believe the answer is 22. That's the non-algebra way to do it. I, think, I don't think it's wrong, but it could be. So I'm going to do it via algebra. I'm going to find a formula for this sequence, and this is an arithmetic sequence with a common difference of 2. So the formula for this is going to be a sub n equals negative 2n plus x. Plug in 1, I get a sub 1 equals negative 2 times 1 plus x. First, a sub 1 is going to be the 50, step, the 50 bricks for the first step. Add 2 to both sides. And I get 52 equals to x. So the formula for the staircase to find out the number of stairs for any particular step is a sub n equals negative 2n plus 52. Trying to find how many it takes for the 15th step. So a sub 15 should be negative 2 times 15 plus 52. Calculator again, negative 2 times 15 plus 52. And magically, because I didn't make an error like I did on the first uh, go round, these match up perfectly. So one way or another, the answer to this is the 15th step is going to take 22 bricks to make it because it works both ways. Um, I wouldn't take points off if you answered the question using this strategy, but if on a take-home test or in-class test or any kind of homework, I made, you know, made more than 15 steps. If I made 100 steps, then, then this strategy here is going to be just disastrous to do. So this strategy of the formula strategy is the preferred way to go about this. 28 is the same sort of problem, but with, with a slightly different words, but it, it's really not different. So 28 has an outdoor amphitheater, 100 seats in the first row, 105 in the second, 110 in the third. The amphitheater has 20 rows. How many rows? I can't say this. How about the amphitheater has 75 rows. How many seats are in the 75th row? Because you certainly can't ask this question if there aren't at least, I should make a little note to myself, 28, 75. So the, let's pretend this amphitheater doesn't, you didn't see that 20 there that I, I, that I can't make dark enough. The amphitheater has 75 rows. How many seats are in the 75th row? Uh, oh, it's not gonna work. It's gonna be negative seats. Back up, sorry about this. The amphitheater has 20 rows. How many seats are in the 20th row? Oh, I take that back. Forget, it, they both work. I thought, I thought, uh, I did some algebra in my head and I did it wrong in my head and, and uh, nevertheless, it, it doesn't matter at this point. We haven't started the problem, so my fumbling with the numbers uh, it won't, won't make that much of a difference other than probably 20 is a better number, to, easier to work with. To do this problem, this problem, the amphitheater has 20 rows, how many seats are in the 20th row? I can do this by hand, so let me try to do this. So I'm gonna make a spot for each of the 20 rows. And I'm going to write how many seats are in each. We're already running out of room. So to answer the question, how many seats are in the 20th row, I can just list them down. First row has 100 seats. I was told that. Second row, 105. Third, 110. Pattern continues. So. 115, 120, 125, 130, 135, 140, 145, 150, 150,
155, 160, 165, 170, 175, 180, 185, 190, 195. Assuming I incremented by five every time without making a mistake, the answer to how many seats are in the 20th row, I believe is 195. Let me get this via algebra to make sure I haven't made a mistake. So I'm kind of double checking myself. Come up with a formula for a sub n. This is an arithmetic sequence. The number of rows seats are getting more, so it's a positive. And 5 is the difference in the number of seats, so 5n plus x. a sub 1 equals 5 times 1 plus x. First row has 100 seats, so 100 equals 5 plus x. Subtract 5 from both sides. Get 95 equals to x. So the formula to find out the rows, number of seats in any row is a sub n equals 5n plus 95. To find out the number of seats in the 20th row, I'll go a sub 20 equals 5 times 20 plus 95. Do that on my calculator. 5 times 20 plus 95. And I get a sub 20 equals 195. It's nice to have that confirmation. The non-algebra, mindless way, the clever algebra way, both tell me that the 20th row has 195 seats. So the, how many seats are in the 20th row? There are 195 seats in the 20th row. And again, both methods work. Had I kept these numbers at 75, and I said the amphitheater has 75 rows, how many seats are in the 75th row? This strategy here, I, I wouldn't have even tried. To list down 20 numbers, I hoped that I could do that without making a mistake. To list down 75 numbers, I'd, either I'd make a mistake or I'd get tired of doing it. The next few problems require a formula. And you don't actually um, have to memorize the formula, but let me um, help you understand the formula because this is a, a semi-famous, uh, this formula is, is famous. It was known before um, a mathematician in third grade developed it by himself, but um, let me give you the story. Anyways, there is a famous mathematician called Gauss and the story goes that was in, he lived, oh, I think in the 1600s, uh, but I forget exactly, the, but it was, you know, hundreds of years ago before there was any technology. And when he was in third grade, his class was not being good. And uh, they didn't have paper, they had chalkboards to write on at, that they had a, a, at their desk. And the teacher gave the class the assignment to do this, just to get them quiet and keep them busy. To add up all the numbers between 1 and 100. In Gauss, after about two seconds, um, wrote a number on his chalkboard, turned it over, and started doing whatever he found more interesting than doing that. And the teacher came up to, to Gauss and said, there's, well, there's no way you can be done already. This is, this is ridiculous. This is impossible to do this fast. Uh, how, how do you know you're right? And here is what Gauss did to add up these numbers. Gauss noticed that you could do this. So I'm adding up, I put dot, dot, dots because I'm, I'm go adding the numbers from one to 100. So there's a four, five, and a six there, but I couldn't write, you know. So really I'm supposed to add up one plus two plus three plus four plus five plus six plus seven, all the way to 100. Gauss did this in his head. He said, well, what if I do this? If I pair the first two, 1 plus 100 is 101. And if I pair the second and second last, I get 2 plus 99, which is 101. And if I pair the third and the third from last, I get 3 plus 98, which is 101. The last pair you'd wind up getting, if I listed this out nicely, is 50 times 51, which is 101. Gauss said, well, there are Every time I make a pair, they add to 101. 
there's 50 pairs times 101, and he said this is 5,050, because 50 times 101 equals 5,050. So without knowing the formula to add the terms in an arithmetic sequence, Gauss figured it out. There's a formula that's, that, allows, that allows somebody that's not so clever to add up these terms. That is essentially what Gauss did. And so the formula approach to add up numbers in an arith this is an arithmetic sequence because the numbers are all a, a, one apart. And the formula to add these numbers is this. The sum, S sub n, the sum of the first n terms in an arithmetic sequence is the number of terms divided by 2 times the product uh, or the sum of the first term plus the last term. For this particular Gauss problem, I'm trying to add up the sum of the first 100 numbers in an arithmetic sequence. I'm adding 100 numbers, so the n is 100. The first number is 1. The last number is 100. This tells me the sum of the first 100 numbers. 100 divided by 2 is 50. 100 plus 1 is 101. This is 50 times 101. The sum of the first 100 numbers is 5,050. And that's essentially what Gauss did. He didn't know the formula, apparently, but he developed the formula in his head, just combining the first and the last, the second from the first and the second from the last. They all add to the same numbers, and then we multiply, or then we just, then we um, yeah, multiply the number of pairs times the sum of each pair. But this formula, for those of us that aren't Gauss, is going to be what we use to add up terms in arithmetic sequences. Not that this has anything to do with this, but I was watching 60 Minutes this past weekend, and uh, there was a, a kid, well, I think he's 17 now, uh, Magnus Carlsen, who's a, a, the, like the number one chess player in the world, and um, he did a, I guess, I don't know if you call it a trick, it's not a trick, because he just did it. Um, he played 10 people simultaneously in chess, which that in itself is not that impressive for him because he was playing people that probably weren't that good in chess. Um, so for him to play 10 games at once isn't, wouldn't be terribly impressive. What made his feat amazingly impressive is he was sitting in a chair and his back was turned to the uh, other people that were playing against him. So he played 10 games of chess against 10 different people, won all 10 people without ever looking at the board once. So he's playing 10 games simultaneously, and he kept track of all 10 games in his head at the same time without ever glancing back to look at the chess board. He just has a picture of the chess board, each of the 10 games individually in his head. It was absolutely you know, amazing to be able to do that, to have that insane of a memory to know exactly where each piece was on each board. It was phenomenal. It had nothing to do with that, but that's definitely um, a different form of genius. I don't know that he would develop this formula by himself, but yet that was amazing. All right, so this formula is going to be needed for the next, for the rest of the problems. Specifically, when I look at these next problems, the next two problems all have this sigma or summation notation. If we go back to the last section, we dealt with this, this notation before. What this wants me to do is replace k with each of the numbers between 1 and 50. So I'm going to go, first I'm going to plug 1 in for k, then I'm going to plug 2 in for k, then I'm going to plug 3 in for k, and keep doing that all the way till I plug 50 in for k. The little sigma notation says after you plug the numbers in, you add the results. So this problem, what it's asking me to do is add the numbers 3 plus 6 plus 9 plus all the way down to the last number of 150. So it's asking me to find the sum of an arithmetic sequence because the numbers are all 3 apart. 
I can find the sum by using that formula. Specifically, I'm finding the sum of the 50 terms of this arithmetic sequence. So I'm finding S sub 50. S sub 50, because the formula is S sub n equals n over 2 times first term plus last term. To find the sum of these 50 numbers, I'm going to use the formula and replace the n with 50. So I'm going to get the sum of 50 terms is 50 divided by 2 times the sum of the first term plus the last term. So in order to for this formula to work, the numbers that I'm adding have to obey an arithmetic sequence, which means they have to have a common difference. In this case, the common difference was 3. The formula doesn't need the common difference, but it needs the first and the last term. The first term I get by plugging 1 in for k. The last term I got by plugging 50 in for k. And so this particular problem is going to, the sum of all those numbers can be found by multiplying 25, which is 50 over 2, times 153, which is the sum, oh, messed up, and that's 3,825. So if you took the time to list out all 50 numbers and you wrote like this, 3 plus 6 plus 9 plus 12 plus 15 plus 18 plus 21. If you did that all the way up to 150, you'd have 50 different numbers that need to be added. And if you added them properly, they'd add up to 3,825. Because to find the sum of an arithmetic sequence, you can bypass the adding and use the formula. That's because you can make pairs. And every pair, like the first pair, I'd make 3 and 150, they're 153. 6 and 147 would be a 153. 9 and 144 would be a 153. There are 25 pairs that all add, add up to 153. And I can get the sum of a long list of, of numbers if those numbers form an arithmetic sequence without actually doing the addition, which is really a nice thing. 32 wants me to find the sum, and it's going to be an arithmetic sequence. This formula right there, because of the number to the left of the k, tells me the common difference between the terms is going to be 3. If I plug 1 in, I'll get the first term. So really, it wants me to do this. It wants me to plug 1 in for k, get a number, then plug 2 in for k, get a number, plug 3 in for k, get a number all the way up until plug 30 in for k, get a number, and then add all those numbers up. First number is going to be 3 minus 4, which is negative 1. Second number is going to be 6 minus 4, which is 2. Third number is going to be 9 minus 4, which is 5. The last number is going to be 3 times 30, which is 90, minus 4, which is 86. So these are the numbers that I'm supposed to add up. And this is adding an arithmetic sequence because between negative 1 and 2, they're 3 apart. 2 and 5 are 3 in part. I can tell that the numbers were going to be 3 apart and that this was going to be an arithmetic sequence. So I didn't have to do anything in terms of expanding this. The only thing I need to know is the first and the last term and how many terms I'm adding. In this particular case, I'm adding 30 terms. So I'm going to use the formula and write n over 2, which is 30 over 2, times the first term plus the last term. In this case, the sum of the first 30 terms, which is the sum that I'm trying to find, is going to be 15 times 85. And 15 times 85 is 1,275. So if I listed all 30 terms, computed each one separately, and then added 30 different numbers, those numbers would add up to 1,275. So each of the rest of the problems in this section, including the word problems, is just asking me to find the sum of a sequence of numbers that, are, that form an arithmetic sequence. For the rest of the problems, I'm just going to find the first number and the last number, and know how many numbers I'm adding, and use the formula, because I don't need to make this list. I, the only thing I need in the list for the formula is the number of things that I'm adding, which comes from that. The first number in the list, which comes from plugging 1 
into the formula, the last number from the list which comes in from plugging the top number into the formula, and then I'll just use the formula. So specifically, to add the first 35 terms in this sequence, I want to find the first number. The first number is going to be 4 minus 3 times 1, which is going to be 4 minus 3, which is 1. I want to find the last number. The last number is going to be the 35th number, which is going to be 4 minus 3 times 35, which is going to equal to negative 101. I'm adding up a bunch of negative numbers. This is probably going to add to a negative number. Now I'm going to figure the formula. I want to add 35 numbers. I'm going to use the formula n over 2 times the sum of these, which is going to be 1 plus negative 101. 35 over 2 doesn't come out to be, it comes out to be a fraction. I'm going to leave it 35 over 2. And these two, 1 plus negative 101 is negative 100. I don't really even need my calculator, but I'm going to use my calculator. I'm going to go parentheses, 35 divided by 2 times parentheses negative 100. And you can't see that, but I did just that. And I get negative 1750. So if I listed all 35 terms and added them together, they'd come out to negative 1750. So the answer to problem 34, the sum of those first 35 terms, is negative 1750. If you were doing it without a calculator, I'd cancel the 2 with the 100. The 2 would become a negative 50. You'd multiply 35 times negative 50 and get negative 1750. 36 should be the same skill. It has a box around the problem, which doesn't make it special. Um, without the box around the problem, this formatting gets messed up. And in most of the problems, I cleared the box I, so you couldn't see the borders. There's boxes around every one of these problems. You just couldn't. I forgot to delete the border. So find the first number in the list, 7 minus 3 times 1, which is 7 minus 3, which is 4. Find the last number, which is the 33rd number, 7 minus 3 times 33. which is negative 92. The sum of the first 33 numbers in this list are begotten by taking n over 2, which is going to be 33 numbers over 2, times the sum of the first number plus the last number. I'm adding a lot of negative numbers, so it's probably going to be negative. Here, s sub 33 is going to be 33 over 2. And adding these, I get 88. I could do that on my negative 88. I could do that on my calculator or by hand. I like my calculator. So I'm going to go 33 divided by 2 times negative 88. When I do that, I get the sum of that list, which is negative 1452. So if I listed all the numbers separately and added them up, to list all the numbers separately, I'd have to plug 1 in for k, then 2 in for k, then 3 in for k, all the way up to plugging 33 in for k. You can simplify and get 33 distinct numbers, add up the numbers, they should add to 4, negative 1452. The next two problems are revisiting the word problems but asking a different question, which makes me think that. Okay. So when I do problem 38, it talks about a staircase being made from bricks. It has a total of 15 steps. The first step has 50 bricks. The second step has 48. The third has 46. The fourth, 44. The fifth, 42. Sixth, seventh, eighth. 9th, 10th, 11th, 12th, 13th, 14th, and 15th. So that's, that's how many bricks are needed for each set of stairs. The question is, how many total bricks would I need to make this entire staircase? And that would be the sum of all these numbers. The number of bricks you need for each individual step is listed here, but how many total bricks? I have to add these up 
That means I'm adding 15 different numbers. It forms an arithmetic sequence, so I'm going to use the formula n over 2, take the first number, which is 50, the number of steps, stair, bricks in the bottom step, plus the number of bricks in the last step, which is 22, which we had already figured out two different ways. When we did the word problem for 26, which was the 15th row had 22 bricks, I reduplicated that. To find out the total number of bricks, I needed to, I'm using the formula that tells me the number of the sum of the, each of the bricks, each of the, the number of bricks for each step is n over 2 times a sub 1 plus a sub n. The number of bricks used is going to be 15 over 2 times, this is 72. I could cancel this if I want. 2 goes into 72 36 times. And I can multiply 15 times 36. I'm doing it off screen. I get 540. So the answer to this, to make all 15 stairs, you'd need a total of 540 bricks. If you added these 15 numbers, they should add to 540. Let me see if I can mindlessly do that. I don't know if you'd be able to see it anyways. Let me try that. 50 plus 48 plus 46 plus 44 plus 42 plus 40 plus 38 plus 36 plus 34 plus 32 plus 30 plus 28 plus 26 plus 24 plus 22. I get the exact same 540 that I got with my algebra. The algebra is way superior, but I could answer question 38 mindlessly. I don't need to do a lick of algebra. If I understand what the problem is telling me, it says the first row has 50 bricks, the first step has 50, the second has 48, 15th is down to 22. How many bricks do I need? I just add those up and I just added those up and get 540. The last problem in this section visits the this problem, the outdoor amphitheater with the 20 rows, and it still has 20 rows in this particular problem, so that's good. So this is revisiting the amphitheater problem. So if I want to, this was how the amphitheater is set up. It has 100 seats in the first row, 105 in the second, all the way to 195 in the 20th row. How many seats does the amphitheater have? I can just add up the number of seats in each row and that will tell me how many seats the amphitheater has way more than I care to do right now, but that's just adding up 20 numbers. Granted, they're all three-digit numbers, and it would be a nuisance to add those up, but not impossible. But I can find the sum of those 20 numbers by using the formula n over 2, which is 20 over 2, times the number of seats in the first row plus the number of seats in the 20th row, the first row had 100 seats, the 20th row had 195 seats. So the number of seats in this amphitheater, because there's 20 rows, it's 20 divided by 2 times the number of seats in the first row plus the number of seats in the last row. This is going to be the sum of 20 numbers from an arithmetic sequence is 10 times 295, assuming I added those properly and that's going to be 2,950 seats. So this particular amphitheater, if I counted up all the seats, it would have 2,950 seats. So just one section left. As I glanced at the section, I already have it, it written up. It doesn't, it doesn't feel any harder than this. It almost feels a little bit easier than this. And so after you do 9-3, there won't be any new material for the rest of the semester, which is Got to be a thing of beauty. Some of you will get to take the final exam, which won't be a thing of beauty, but um, a lot of you won't have to take the final exam. And after you master this material, you can be you know, done, which has got to feel good. All right, that's got to be enough.